Today we're going to build an open air workshop. I'm going to make this project a little bit easier on myself by using the Toya Grid Modular Pergola System. It's a heavy duty welded steel and powder coated bracket system that'll work with 4x4s that I picked up from Home Depot. The Toya Grid comes with all the screws needed so all I have to do is pound into 4x4s and drive the screws. The instructions recommended to have at least three people to assemble the structure, but I felt like I could get it done by myself. I tilted up one end, but I was having a hard time getting the 4x4 columns to go all the way in. They weren't quite at the right angle. I was using 10 foot long 4x4s, so the whole thing was already starting to get heavy, and it was hard to get it up high enough to the point where I could slide things in. So. I decided to open up the scaffolding bench that my friends over at Metal Tech had sent me to see if that could help. I also made a temporary brace out of a 10 foot long 4x4 with two 2x4s screwed to the end. This allowed me to prop up one end so that I could slide in the vertical supports. At this point I was just using the scaffolding bench as a rolling ladder to drive in the screws. With the scaffolding set to about 30 inches off the deck, I thought I could stand on top push up on the, the structure, and then slide in another column. But it all proved to be just a little bit too cumbersome. So I raised up the adjustable deck on the scaffolding bench and decided to make a more substantial support that would be about eight feet high that could serve as a stepping stone for getting the frame up and steady so that I could slide in the last two columns. From here, I was able to use the bench and that 10 foot temporary support to get the whole frame up and stable. The more screws you add, the tighter and less flexible the structure becomes, so I only put in about half the screws because I still needed to wiggle it around and move it a bit. The frame wasn't in the right location, so I just kept moving one column at a time and walked the whole structure all the way over to where it needed to be. Adding the second bay really showed off how strong these brackets are. I was able to insert the first 4x4 and it didn't bend the bracket at all even when it was cantilevered about 10 feet. I then used my 10 foot temporary support 4x4 to get that 4x4 up nice and level and drove in additional screws. I assembled the end of the second bay flat on the deck. I'm going to be tilting this frame up by myself so I made some supports out of 2x4s that would help me keep the frame upright while I got it into position and drove in the screws. I lifted it up and set it on top of the scaffolding bench, then lifted it up to my eight foot tall support, and then now I was finally able to push it all the way right side up and screw in the temporary two by four supports. I bent one side of the last bay out a little bit to make room for the last 4x4. I slid it into place and then lifted the other end of the structure and pulled it all together. I unscrewed my temporary supports and was pretty pleased with myself for constructing a 10x10x20 10 by 10 by foot structure by myself. Mike from Modern Bills got back just in time to help me with the siding. We started by taking measurements to make sure everything was nice and straight and square before securing the feet to the deck. Mike added eight foot long two by fours to the sides of the four by four post. This will just give us a little bit more meat to screw into. I added Toya grid brackets to some additional four by four posts to create two additional columns that again will give us just more places to screw our horizontal siding onto. We added eight foot long two by fours to the sides of these additional columns as well. We have a lot of miscellaneous leftover lumber from the tiny house, so we started with some two by sixes and we made sure to get this first course nice and level. We alternated between boards with different widths and thicknesses and tried to stagger the joints as best we could. And while we're setting these posts, let me tell you a little bit about the sponsor for this week's video, Filter By. Most of us don't change the air filters in our home often enough. Dirty and clogged air filters can lead to bad indoor air quality, some unpleasant smells, and they can reduce the performance of your heating and cooling system. 
FilterBuy.com has a massive selection of high quality American made air filters. They provide free shipping and they have a subscription plan so you don't have to remember. They'll just keep sending you a fresh clean air filter whenever you need one. My parents have allergies so I set them up with a subscription plan where they will get a nice fresh clean air filter every three months. It had been about a year since they replaced the last one and it was pretty gross so this subscription plan should definitely result in better indoor air quality. If you're not into subscription plans, they also have the option for a one-time purchase with great prices. Click on the link in the description box below to find out more about Filter Buy. All right, back to the build. Because we were dealing with pieces of all different lengths, we had eight footers, 10 footers, 12 footers, and a bunch of scrap pieces, we occasionally ended up with a situation where the ends were free floating. And in those cases, we just added additional vertical supports to bridge between them. Once we got to about counter height, we added in a shelf made out of a two by six. This will serve as a nice rail where we can set our tools. The wall looks so good that Mike decided to stop for a selfie. These solar shade canopies, also from Toya Grid, are going to be crucial for keeping the hot desert sun off of us. These came with these bent metal brackets that align with the holes in the corners. The shades have straps and buckles sewn onto them, so all you have to do is add in these brackets and buckle the shade right to them. There's also additional brackets that go along the side. They keep the canopy from sagging. I'm really happy with how this project turned out. We have a nice shady spot to work, a clean backdrop to film against, and this structure won't be that hard to unscrew, take apart, and move, which is important because this is just a house that we're renting. If you want to learn more about the Toya grid or the scaffolding bench, be sure to click on the links in the description box below. Check out some of our other workshop projects, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks. Bye.